can I get you? Oh, you want a uh, coffee? Did you say? You want a... Oh, I'm sorry. Did I... I... A what? You want a Celestino cappuccino? And scene. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a little clip, a little dialogue from my new movie, Perpetually Depressed, but Always Excited. A life of the Celestino Dooley. A look into, this is still the title, the look into a man who is troubled by much, but enjoyed by many, and enjoys much, and is troubled by few. A story of a man who was a boy, who was a baby, who was nothing, is now something, an embryo taken on life. This is Cappuccino Celestino. Episode 14 of the Something Cafe podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I took off that giant sphere off my microphone. No reason. I just want to see what this episode's going to sound like with uh, with the factory issued uh, pop filter that uh, the microphone came with. Um, I really really like the Sphere pop filter. It is from the company Chaotica. It is called uh, the uh, the Chaotica Eyeball. It is a pop filter and an isolation uh, and an isolation device in the same. It is professional grade high high grade prof professional series i've seen a lot of photos of a list producers and engineers work with it i just dropped it on my keyboard and hopefully did not stop any recording but yeah i've seen a lot of uh videos and stuff of people using this um and it's not that i don't trust it i just i i kind of i i kind of want to see what it's like to to use this, what the mic came with, because also if I use the Chaotica eyeball, I have to put my microphone on the on the mount. This mount, I have to put uh, the microphone on the mount uh, upside down, and I don't like doing that. It's not, it's it's not a big issue. It's just it's not what it was intended for. So, you know, I I I just I just want to use things as they're intended for uh, especially things like this microphone because this microphone is awesome um a little lower energy right now but that's going to change real quick um it is currently 11 59 a.m on a saturday morning i was up till four last night and i woke up at around 9 30 i burnt some croissants and proceeded to eat a cup of pudding that little window of my life you just witnessed is rather indicative of my day today. So let's get started and take a sip with me. All right. Uh, episode 14, guys. Welcome back. Like I said, my name is Celestino Dooley. And 14 weeks, huh? 14 weeks of the Something Cafe podcast, the Something Cafe brand. Um, and if you guys don't know, there is a second series under the brand as well. We have the Something Cafe podcast, which is the one you're listening to right now, you beautiful, beautiful person. And the other series is called Cafe Critique, hosted with Brittany Loudon and myself. Um, primarily reviewing movies. We say all media because we, we would like to get to other media, but movies is really working out for us. It's easier. It's one and done. We don't have to, you know, commit ourselves to a TV show or anything, any, anything like that, you know? 
we go see uh, me and Brittany go to the theater every Friday night, and then when then we come back to my place and we record the uh, the the episode, and the episodes come out on Thursdays. So pretty good little system we've got going on. We have a pretty good release schedule. Um, we are uploading shorts every single day. Shorts. What are shorts? You might ask. By shorts, I mean short videos on the social on the social medias like Instagram Reels, TikToks, YouTube Shorts, stuff like that. A uh, uh, short gets uploaded every day to every platform at two thirty. Episodes for the Something Cafe podcast come out every week. Uh, every Tuesday at 9 a.m. EST. Uh, episodes for Cafe Critique come out at, I believe, it is 10 a.m. every Thursday. With a long-form video on coming out on the YouTube uh, every Wednesday um, around, I believe, 3. Um, and many more to come. I want a lot of shows under this brand. I, 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 I want to tickle... Listen to me here. I want to tickle every corner of this square if you know what I'm talking about. And I know you've been to a sex ed class. We all know what a circle is. The brain. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of brain, I saw one the other day at work. Hmm? Pretty, um... I've seen a lot of things so far seen a lot you know lots of stuff i need to tread um i need to i need to tread lightly for professional reasons i do work in a hospital where real patients are getting real treatment to save their lives i don't want to i don't want to um insert a nuance of jest into that notion um these are lives that are in the hands of these uh, beautifully intelligent men and women. Um, but it is rough for your boy to see uh, an old lady's vagina out of, out of nowhere. Unexpected. But you know what? That's a little thing we like to call in the industry war. You know? These eyes have seen war. You hear me? You're watching this episode and you're thinking to yourself kind of notice a little less light behind his eyes, you know, like compared to episode six, maybe episode six, he was this all happy go lucky, you know, you know, kid, right? Come on, man. You know me better. Look at me. These eyes have seen things that you've, you can't even comprehend unless you have kids and you've seen exactly what I've seen. But Yeah, I don't want to violate anything, any terms, any conditions. Uh, There is HIPAA, although I do not know any of the patients personally, nor do I know their names, or do I even know what they look like, except for the parts of them that I don't want to see. Um, I think that's a pretty cool, um, I think that's that's a pretty cool rule set in place, you know, HIPAA and everything. The more rules for confidentiality within a in it within a clinical sense is better it's always better you know for the safety and the privacy of these patients who are already in a very vulnerable position um i think there's something beautiful about and you know it's we're, we're kind of going to get serious but don't don't worry i'm not gonna make it too serious <laughs> i think there is something beautiful about perhaps you know like a male surgeon performing a bit of a personal surgery for someone uh whether it be reproductive systems or i don't want to say the word prostate i'm trying to think of what's like a professional term for that you know just just things like that let me get to my point i think there's something beautiful about um having that professional relationship where anyone who's not a surgeon or a nurse or a doctor in that position would be really weirded out and like ew blah 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 this girl I don't, I don't want to see that, blah, 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 but I think there's something be- beautiful that some of these men and women have came to, to see as normal is just this, it's all science, it's all anatomy, you know? Um, and I think that's, I think that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty awesome thing. 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that can't take something seriously. Um, I now hold on. You might've just said you're, you, you might've just said, well, so, you know, you are one of those people. I am half the time. Okay. I am half the time. Um, but I do think, uh, I do think that, that people in clinical positions like that, healthcare p- positions like that, I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's pretty awesome that they can see some of the craziest things on a on an operating table. They see things that that patient might have not wanted to show anybody. I think there's something beautiful about that. You know, I know I keep on saying it, but it's it's some it's something I'm rather passionate about. You know, uh, where everyone keeps the 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 professionalism, and they all have one goal. Is you know saving a life. I, I really don't think there's anything cooler. Um, where did this even come from? You might ask. Well, if you're one of my, uh, one, if you're one of my friends from the from the past, and saying friends from the past is a rather large umbrella. I'm casting. I'm just saying friends that I grew up with or got to know maybe a year or like year or two or or go and don't really keep in touch with anymore just given that we've all moved and whatnot Uh, if you were with me for any extended amount of time you would kind of know that I that this conversation I'm having is something that's not that was probably not even possible for me the fact that I'm, I'm talking about healthcare in this light and whatnot I didn't think so either you know uh this is what I say to my friends when I tell them I work in a hospital they're like dude literally how I'm like what do you mean they're like dude you are (laughs) like they they don't say it but like I've always kind of been known as like (sighs) my mom wouldn't want me to say the dumbest one but I've always been kind of known as the one that's the most challenged when it comes to 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 education and stuff like that I did, I did get my, my bachelor's in under two years. So suck it player. Okay. Suck it. Fool. But when it comes to math, you know, once you say the word math, I just instantly find myself on the short bus. So now it's like, Celestino, how on earth are you working in healthcare? How on earth are you even in the OR? I don't know myself, to be completely honest with you. Um, But it has been nothing but acts of the God that you and I believe in that I'm in the position I am today. Um, Because I truly believe this formula. Now, follow me. Follow me here, okay? I truly believe this formula. It is something that I deem true it's something i deem honest and it's something that i uh that 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 i deem applicable to every human in the world hear me and hear me and hear me well success is purely just the marriage of preparation and luck you hear me let me say that again success what is what is success to you? Think about it. Think about what success might be for you. Success is very different from what I deem successful. Jeff Bezos's successful is a lot different than perhaps um, the young boy in Puerto Rico who just graduated the fifth grade. Obviously, but what is success? Success, I don't think, now let me do a little uh, um, amending. I'm not saying success is only that, the marriage between luck and preparation. I think success is, can be found in other ways, but I think the, the main point, success in, in, in its entirety, success in what you might love doing or whatever, or maybe success in what you want to find. I truly believe is the marriage between luck and preparation. Why? Why luck? Why not just preparation? Someone might hear that and say, well, being successful is just being prepared. 
for so being prepared is like what like training and getting smarter or maybe stronger preparation is you know getting ready for the job uh yes yes it is you know um i do believe success can be found with only preparation but the marriage of luck and preparation i believe yields a type of success that is life-changing this could be a job this could be um perhaps a song of a musician that blows up out of nowhere this could be a small little podcast who's getting good numbers on their on their content and one more tiktok away and i am making more money doing this than i am at the hospital that's the type of success i'm talking about and that's the type of success i found at working at the hospital again i'm keeping anonymity with this you know um no one's telling me to be careful with what i say i'm telling myself be careful with what i say because i don't want to look i this is a this is a big company i don't need them knocking at my door saying hey why are you talking about us on your podcast because so far i haven't even said their name or anything related to it so i could be talking about anything and anybody and you know what i'm going to keep it that way um where does success lie in me working at the hospital not even the promotion i got to work on the or word we are just talking about the hospital cuz not a lot of people know this story so let me so let me let me let me tell you. Sit down. Hear ye, hear ye, and hear me well. Before we start, let me take a sip. Because if you're watching the video, you might see that my eyes are a little more squinted than usual. Because your boy's a little tired, to be completely honest with you. Let's take a sip. That's that. That's that liquid silver from Mitra 9. For the love of God. Please sponsor me. I'd really appreciate it. And I love you guys. So let me tell you the story about how I landed a job at the hospital. Started in 2002. I, it was a warm, dark, scary void that I was in. And with the pressure unbeknownst to my newly formed nerves, I was whisked out into a very bright light on a cold, cold surface. I was screaming, and they cut the feeding tube from my belly button to my mother's navel. You just went to a very weird place with me that I didn't even know I was going. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's pretend that didn't happen. Listen to me. I graduated college. What did I go for college for? Might not say. Because, again, do I only have 50 subscribers on YouTube? Yes, but... I'm trying to be cordial. I'm don't, you know, it, it, you know, here's a little rant, you know, it, it's, it's so funny, you know, because about 10 years ago, maybe not even everything was like, don't even say your name on the internet. Don't even say the letter of your first name. Don't even say, don't even tell them you have a first name. Don't even tell them, do, don't even tell them if you're a man or a woman. Don't even, don't tell anybody anything because, because like what? Our parents convinced us is like, if you, you know, if, if you tell them the first letter of your middle name, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get tracked down and, and you're going to get raped. You know, it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, like, geez, like, like, dude, chill. <laughs> you know? Like, it was so intense. Like we, we grew up on the internet where it's like, do not even let people know you have a heartbeat. We have everything about everyone everywhere. You know, you know? So that, that, that's why I try to be a, a little anonymous with some of my life details. Um, like the school I went to, the place I work. You know, because I don't want it coming back to me. I don't want something that I said to 
follow me back and blah, blah, blah. so I went to college and I'll just say I got a music degree um, um a, a a a production degree more than just like listen to me I I did not get a major I did not get a bachelor in like oboe okay like mine was actually useful well, more useful than a degree in oboe less useful than agricultural studies so uh but i got a music or production degree and that's what i want to that that that's what i want to do is that at the time my my goals were very different than they are now um i don't do much music producing nowadays uh but i still use the same skills what's the difference right well, what I'm doing right now to record this podcast is basically everything that I would do to record a song. I'm running the same software, using the same equipment, so that's where those skills came from. If I'm not making music, it doesn't mean I'm putting that knowledge to waste. I'm, I'm actually using it in a lot of other ways. But at the time, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Graduates college, I get my bachelor's in under two years, so four-year degree, got it in under two. That was definitely a, <laughs> that definitely did did well for your boy's confidence for sure. Given that I was always I always felt like the stupid one. I mean, my senior year of high school, I was in like algebra. I was in like algebra one. I was in algebra one with my with my editor who's editing this podcast, Evan Greenfield. Evan, you you can throw up your socials up on the screen right now if you want. Um. I was in class with him. So, you know, I've always, and, and oh my gosh, you know, it's kind of like, it's so funny looking back to it, you know, like every time something bad happens to me or I feel bad, I just, I think I just need to start working on pausing and then laughing about it because when you look back on it, now that we're in the future, you think to yourself, what the heck was I worried about? I kind of, I went to this high school that was kind of like an elite high school. Like it was not, I'm not saying everyone there was elite. There was certainly some absolute brain dead people there, but it was a school where you had to apply to get into. And it was pretty pretentious, but it was awesome up until my senior year. Then that's when, that's when everything went to shit. But, um, almost like everyone was like taking APs. Oh, my tick is going, guys. My left eye tick is going. Goodness, why now? Why? It's so annoying. And I could stop it like I am right now, but it hurts. Like, uh, oh, man. Why is my left eye tick going now? Obviously, everyone around me, the day-to-day, -day, see me have Tourette's, but I, 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 I think things time out well enough that no one... I spend the, the day with ever sees a, what I call a tick fit where one specific tick starts really going. No one, I don't, I don't think anyone that I have at work has seen me have a tick fit. And this is even, this is a pretty tame one. I'll have tick fits with my arms. It's, it's pretty, 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 pretty bad guys. But back to what I was saying, APs. I was surrounded by kids who were taking APs and everything at, at advanced classes, and they would be like, so, like, oh, Celis, uh, Celestino, are you taking, which APs are you taking this year? I was like, oh, I'm, um, I'm not, not taking any APs. I'm, 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 I'm taking Algebra 1 and Biology 2. And they're like, <laughs> no APs, nerd, dumb loser. You know, of course I felt bad. Like, I was like, I am literally the dumbest person and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting in any college. Well, I ended up being the first one in my graduating class to get accepted into their dream college. So then I was like, okay, yeah, suck it playa. Um, so I'm leaving college or sorry, I'm leaving high school, not thinking I am the smartest person. I graduate college after a year and a half. And now I'm like, great. I have a, I have a production degree in music. And I think I'm the dumbest person in the world. I really set myself up for success, didn't I? 
Uh, let me tell you this though. My graduating class for college was like 40 people because we, we went by months, not by years with like graduating classes. Cause it was only a year and a half. I had 40 people at the start. And after the 20 months, I think, I believe on graduation day, I walked with about six of them. Again, that one did a good deal for my, for my confidence. <laughs> um, but you know, now that I'm in the real world, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I've got mom and dad being like, it's because you haven't applied to any jobs. I said, I've already applied to some. They say you should have applied to more. Everyone's worried. I get it. You know, like I'm not looking forward to that when I'm a parent, you know, like worried for my son because, because, because worry, love and worry play hand in hand. And mom worries a lot. And I know she's listening to this right now. And you need to chill. I love you. And your baby boy is doing good, mama. Okay? Kisses. Um. <laughs> so weird. Damn it. Um. But I get it, you know? Like, <laughs> like their fat son who already hates himself just graduated, just graduated with a music degree. And, uh, he's, he's worried about getting a job and, and you as parents are like, okay, what, what do we do now? <laughs> you know? Um, because getting a job at a, at a recording studio and all that, that, that was kind of out of the window. Do you, do you know how many recording studios I applied for? I applied to every recording studio in, in, in more than just central Florida. Like I applied and reached out to so many and none of those fish took like even looked at the bait, um, which made me feel even worse about myself. And I got this kind of this rink, this rinky dink job that me and Br Brittany have me have mentioned a couple times. We just call it the the cafe again because I, I don't want to use names. Um, and that job was the best job ever. But then it, it just totally fell belly up. And then one day, this was before the cafe went belly up, but one day. I, I have a family friend down here and he is a part of the company. I'll just say, and this is not a, this is, let, let me get this straight. This is not a form of nepotism. This is purely just him saying, Hey, you should go and, um, and, uh, and apply for, for this company that I work for. Nothing more, nothing less. He didn't convince anybody. He did, you know, this, this is not a form of nepotism. Purely just, hey, kid, shoot, shoot your shot at this company. So I did. It was a hospital. I was shooting for a non-clinical position. That's all I will say. Um, a position that requires no education clinically because I'm not dealing with patients or whatever. And for some reason or the other, I got the job. I, 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 against all odds, un, un, unbeknownst to everybody, I got the job. So now I'm like, well, crap, how on earth did I get that job? So now I've got to get good. So I've been, I've had this job for maybe eight months now. Let's see what it's April. I've, I've been saying I've had it for eight months now for a long time. Maybe I, I need to recount. Okay. So nine yeah, and eight, nine. And that's how I landed in that job. You know, I just, I got, I got a, like, I got a lead. I followed that lead and the lead hired me. And that just goes to show. And why did we even start talking about this to explain what success with the, with the definition of preparation and luck, how was I prepared? Well, I was already searching for jobs. I have I have great qualities, but like business wise, I have great qualities about myself that make for a really good employee, things like attitude, work ethic, the desire to want to make things more efficient, things that are very useful in my, in my line of work. Uh, where did the luck come from? Did I just happen to know that guy that just reached out to me and said, Hey dude, you should try to maybe apply for this company. That's the luck. The preparation was actually working hard to 
to, to get that interview and talk to people and prepare my attitude and my discipline for this job to prove to people that, that I was a worthy hire, even though I'm the one who has zero experience. That's what we call success, you know? So what is, what, what does that look for you? What's something in your life that you got from preparation and you got it because some because you lucked out and something something happened to push that along, right? Uh, I think that's an interesting thought. Um, work has been going great, by the way. Lots of um, lots of internal conversations going on, but you know, work is going great. We have a lot of cool things that we're working on that we need to uh, get impl- implemented. Um. And now I'm going to warn you guys, I'm, I'm about to touch on a subject that I'm, I'm very passionate about, and it might turn into a rant with my eye ticking. I'm going to take a sip because this might turn into a rant. I'm going to keep things pretty anonymous. I know I have one or two people from work that listen to this. I'm not keeping it anonymous because I'm worried that they'll find out who I'm. I'm, I'm not even talking about someone specifically. You know, this isn't even me. What I'm about to talk about is as is is genuinely not even gossip. You know? Like what I'm about to talk about is nothing that I'd be worried about talking with them personally. This is just for the sake of privacy on the internet. So, I got a, a couple boys that are listening to the podcast from work. This is not this is nothing new to you guys. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess this is more of a commentary in general. It's not just about work, but just in general, but it came up at work and let me, let me, and let me tell you, let, let, let me tell you this. Anybody who works with me and is actively contri- contributing to the thought that things are unfixable and Anything we do is not worth it. I really don't want to cuss because I know my mom's listening. I'm going to have Ed and bleep this out. Anybody that that responds with positivity and ideas and thoughts with what's the point because we've tried this in the past and it's never worked, so why try it now? You can genuinely... There is nothing more disheartening about looking someone in the eyes after that someone has just finished saying, I think we can do this, guys. There's no, like, there's nothing to worry about. Even if things go wrong, that just means we will learn from our mistakes. Little people, there are such, it's such a small list of people that I gen, that I genuinely hate. And can't stand. And these kinds of people are on my list. The people that that then say. But you don't understand. There's no point to this. Because every time we try. To fix something. We get you know. Shot down. You are the worst kind of human. You know that? Um, What I'm saying is pretty harsh. I know what I'm saying is pretty harsh, um, pretty aggressive, but I've, I've seen it a lot. I've seen it at the cafe. I've seen it at, at, at work now. I've seen it at the factory that I used to work at. It's pretty harsh. I know what I'm saying. It's rather ab- abrasive, but I cannot think of a stance that someone could can take that's worse than that. Who are you to shoot down an optimistic view? Even if that optimistic view is a little out there, even if that optimistic view is, uh, I know there's a term for it. Even if that optimistic view is, you know, uh, is, is kind of, is kind of unobtainable, maybe, maybe a little unrealistic. I don't care. 
If you're the type of person to just shut down an optimistic view because in air quotes, apparently you, you, you know better and you've seen this done before and there's no point or no chance. I mean, you, you are where depression was first discovered. I was telling my buddy at work, that's how someone becomes depressed at work. That's how someone hates themselves at work. That that's how someone ends up hating their work. I'm loving it right now. I freaking love work. And I'm not, and and, and yeah, it's because of the it's because of the it's because of the promotion. It has nothing to do with the with the alleged pay increase, which I'm telling you right now was was not much <laughs> to begin with, but because I again I I have like no experience to this, so when I got promoted, it, it wasn't really it wasn't anything to tell home about to be completely honest with you, but but I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm genuinely loving work. Like I am, it, it is so much fun. I get to work with like one of my best friends. Me and him work great together. We get to do some really cool things. I get to see surgeries and talk with really smart and cool people. I love it. And there's a lot that we have to figure out. You're probably sitting at work right now. There are things about your work that, that, you know, there are, there are issues at every job, but I, I think it's fun to figure them out. I mean, may, may, maybe I'm the crazy one, but it is, I kind of, when I go to work, it sounds really nerdy and probably why I'm still single, but like, it's kind of like a video game to me. Like it's fun. There are problems I get to solve things. I get to do tasks, tasks I get to complete. Um, it's kind of funny. You know, we were just talking about math and all of that. Let me, let me tell you something. One of my key traits about myself, a trait that has changed my life and is what makes me who I am. I actually learned from math class. Isn't that crazy? I was just, I was just talking about how I was like, I felt like the dumbest person in all of high school. And I was in algebra one, my senior year, while everyone else was like AP calculus and, and things like that. But there was something I, I learned in math class that changed my life and changed how I view every problem in life. This is how I realized it. So I used to do math tutoring, as in I was the one being tutored to, and because I needed help, right? Take two math equations. The first equation is four numbers and a, maybe a little bit of addition. The second math equation is 40 numbers with multiple branching sets of rules and laws to follow within the mathematic equation preferences. Which one's harder? Obviously, question two, right? Right? Now, what's something both of those questions share? Think about it. The first question with four numbers and a little bit of addition, and the calculus question. What's something that both of those questions have exactly the same in common? They both have an answer. Listen to me. Listen to me, because this is something you're, you're probably de dealing with right now. Both of those math equations have an answer. So slowly, I used to look at math questions and just instantly just mentally give up. Oh, I can't. I can't do this. Oh, this is, this is way too hard. I'm not smart enough for this. I am way too dumb to solve this. Every, every time a new one would slide on my desk, I would just instantly think that. And I'm not sure what clicked. But sooner or later, I would start to look at those questions and I would say to myself, this looks horrible and insanely difficult, but it wouldn't be on the paper if it didn't have an answer. Somewhere. It has an answer somewhere. But it still has an answer. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how I stay the way I am. That is how I stay composed the way I do. I worry about things because I care. And at work, I, I, I get pretty vocal and a bit, you know, I just kind of, 
you know, comically, you know, ob- like kind of obsessed with some procedures that I that I care about doing right. But let me tell you this. I don't ever worry. Now, hear me. Hear me when I say this. I don't ever worry. I get anxious. Anxiety is different than worry. I don't ever worry about anything. I get anxious. I get depressed a lot. I get nervous. I get, I get, I get sad. I never worry though. Because at the end of the day, I am, there's, there's some weird power inside of me that I can just turn off the worriness with just, with just a simple change of mind. Just like that. And uh, that's why I cannot stand people who look me in the eyes and say, I don't, uh, there is no point of you trying to fix this thing because when we've tried to fix it in the, in the past or when we've spoken up in the past, we always get shot down. So what's the, so what's the point? You are the issue. You are genuinely the issue. And you are the reason why so many people hate their jobs. I'm not saying you're the one making people hate their jobs. I'm saying it's that mindset that you have along with 50 uh, freaking, I don't know how many people there are in America, but half of the American workforce, more than half of the American workforce, you think just like them. That's why they're all so depressed and sad and hate their jobs and hate their lives. Now, listen to me when I say this, because I, you know, some people can, can hear that and it, and it, it could sound a little privileged. I understand that, right? For those of who, for those of you who don't, who aren't following with what I just said, let me explain it like, like this, you know, so something, you know, someone could say, all right, all right, so just, you know, that's all fine and dandy. How about you go to an, an underwater oil, like oil miner and go tell that to him? Like, hey, dude, there's nothing to worry about. There's an answer to everything. How about you go ahead and go tell that to the police officer who just lost his best friend? I totally understand. I totally understand. I'm not saying everything has an easy answer. I'm saying everything has an answer. So before we get into some of the less serious stuff, um, and you know, you might see a common theme. Look, it's been 14 episodes and me- mental health is something I'm very passionate about. Why? Because every other day, you know, <laughs> it's so funny that we're talking about this, man. Okay. So to kind of, to kind of break the fourth wall here, um, I've been, I'm, I'm 21 years old and I, I've been pretty suicidal for a lot of that, you know, never attempted. Thank God. Sure as hell wanted it though. Uh, I don't feel that way anymore here and now. And then some things might happen to me and it kind of creeps in a little bit. You know, the thoughts, it kind of creeps in a little bit, you know, uh, kind of, you know, things that, because there, there are things that do kind of put me over the edge, you know, um, but I'm not saying that the people with like the hardest jobs in the world, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying they just need to think on the bright side. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is the answer is not always easy, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen, the math question still has an answer. No matter how difficult or how hard, the math the math question still has an answer. I want you to remember that, um, and that's why I'm so serious about some of the stuff. A lot of the times, that's why if you've watched every episode, highly unlikely, but if you've watched every episode, right? I mean, this is kind of an occurring theme. It's kind of serious talk about mental health and you know and 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 suicidal tendencies and depression because. The host of this podcast deals with that stuff every day tenfold, 
you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like having like a NASCAR driver do a podcast, but it's like, why does he always talk about driving? It's kind of something he does every day, you know, you know, like it's kind of a part of him and he wants to share it. Well, I want to share this because I want to make sure that anybody listening to this that feels a similar way that I do, I want to make sure people don't feel alone because there's certainly, there's certainly been stuff this week that's crept up about my, just me being really self-conscious about being single and unwanted and, and ugly and, uh, and unattractive and undesirable. And I have no one to go to come home to. And I, I share no touch or no love with anybody ever, you know, but you know, (laughs) who needs that? Um, you know, when I'm surrounded by people who are already married and, you know, you know, pretty happy, you know, kind of eats away at you, doesn't it? You know, but, uh, you know, you, you just think about it in other ways, how I have other things to, to think about, like the podcast and work and things like that, all stuff that's going to make me rich. And then in the next 10 years, and I'm not even going to worry about people. That's where we are. Sorry for being always serious, guys. But, you know, part of me is like, stop talking about this stuff, dude. But at the same time, I have to. I have to. It's not funny stories, you know, but I have to talk about it. You know, then I think like, do I tell Evan to cut it out? Do I tell Evan to cut that conversation out? I, I don't know, because I have I haven't I haven't even gotten to my funny topics, and we're almost an hour in. You know. And then you know, I I do kind of get a little worried about that, because <laughs> I still want these episodes to be fun, you know. But uh, let's go ahead and take a sip, all right? Well, when I, okay, when I think about it, yes, some of the stuff I just talked about can be depressing, but I think let's take some of my own advice. I think everything that I just said is actually rather encouraging. Do you agree? Yeah. Some of the stuff I said was kind of, you know, sad or whatever, (laughs) but how about we look at it differently, you and I, okay? Wh- whoever you are listening, how about me and you look at that differently? How about me and you look at what I just talked about as a good thing and as an encouraging thing? Because I think, I would like to think that's what it is. And let's not worry about if it's too sad or not. This is the Something Cafe podcast. When you come in here to grab a cup of joe, you don't know if it's going to start to snow. You know what I mean? And here's a thought I had. Follow me on this one. If a beaver built his own house, damn it, I messed up the joke. (sighs) I really nailed that one. I literally just said the punchline before the setup. (laughs) I, 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 guys, I'm a little tired today, but let me, let me, let me, every, 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 okay. I had this thought. If a beaver's house breaks down, isn't that his fault? Hmm? A little thought to get you thinking. Here comes, here comes Lars. Everybody, go to the video and look at Lars. Look at Lars. This is my, this is my cat Lars. He very, he loves living with me. Look at how happy he looks right now. If you haven't seen Lars yet, this is my baby boy. This is my baby boy. I love him very, very much. And yes, as a 21-year-old grown man, I'm saying he's my baby boy because he is. See? That was a meow of joy because I hug him and cuddle him so much. I love you, Lars. I love you. Lars does piss me off sometimes. I look like a character on 13 Reasons Why. My arm is covered in scratches and cuts. And I think that's partially my fault. Because I've never raised a cat by myself before, and I think as he was growing up, because I've had him ever since he was born, basically, I have never 
raised a cat and I didn't stop him from biting. I kind of let him feel like, and now he's chewing on my shoe. Those are new shoes, dude. Stop it. Um, I kind of didn't keep him from biting and I kind of let him get used to biting and thinking biting is fine. So now I actually look suicidal because my arm looks like a damn seismograph. Every Friday, I'd like to get Culver's ice cream because, you know, it's Friday, ice cream, ice cream good. I'm an adult. I can buy whatever I want. I could go and buy an ice cream cake right now and eat it, but I'm not because I don't want to give up my slim, slender physique. But I do get Culver's ice cream every Friday after work, and that's, an, that's another thing, okay? You know who I want? Okay, so if I was in a room, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try to make this sound less like I'm a murderer and more that I'm pissed. And as you can see, my, my eye tick is going, brother. I'm like Nemo, and I've got a little fin that won't stop flapping. Let me tell you what happens. This is America, damn it. And I go up to the Culver's drive-thru, and I continue to do this because I haven't learned my lesson. I haven't learned my lesson that I will always be disappointed. And it's such a difficult thing to be disappointed about because it's like, I'm already embarrassed that I'm ordering ice cream by myself. Am I really going to be... The fat dude who comes back and says, um, uh, my, uh, my, my, my ice cream didn't, my, I, like, really, really? I'm not going to be that guy. I'm already, em, 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 I'm already embarrassed that I'm, that I'm buying ice cream. Okay. When I go out to Culver's, this is what I order. A large concrete mixer v- with vanilla ice cream, salted caramel, and two toppings worth of cookie dough. That should be a lot of cookie dough, should it not? Hmm? That's a lot of cookie dough. I know it's a lot of cookie dough because I've, it's worked before. I watched them put it on the screen, cook the cookie dough times two. I know they hear me. I say it out loud. I get up to the window. I pay. I get my ice cream. I cannot name a more disappointed feeling in my life than when I'm driving home five minutes away from the Culver's and I've made it halfway through and I've only eaten six pieces of cookie dough when I asked for a double. You want to know why it's so upsetting? Because it is such like a small, unimportant, embarrassing, trivial, childish, immature, unreasonable, unthinkably stupid thing to get mad about But because it's such an unimportant thing to get mad about, it makes you even more mad because you know you shouldn't be getting mad at it. It'll have like six pieces of cookie dough in it. And that's all I, that's all I want. I just want a big cup of ice cream and cookie dough. That's all I want. It's a Friday. It's my own money. Damn it. I want my ice cream and I want a lot of cookie dough in it. And I ask for double and whoever's making it just doesn't even look at it. Like they obviously just don't care. They just do what they always do with the cookie dough and then boom, done. And I look in the mirror and I think to myself, what's, what is living? What is sentience? What is life? What is it? It's definitely not this. Is it worth it? You know? There is not a madder version of me than the, ver- than the version of me that is five minutes away from the Culver's and realizing that there are six pieces of cookie dough in my double cookie dough order. You don't want to be around that version of me. You, you, re- you really don't. That's a scary, scary, that's a scary monster that I turn into. There is nothing that makes me more pissed in this world than that. And let, and, 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 I, and I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to preface this again. It's not because that's such an important thing to get mad at. It's really not. In fact, it's very stupid to get mad at, but it's that sole reason that it is so unimportant that 
the fat guy is complaining about, I didn't get enough cookie on my ice cream. It's just, it is already embarrassing that I'm mad at it. And then I get more mad at it. That's, that's why it makes me so pissed. Damn it. If, oh, dude, even thinking about it gets my blood boiling. Oh, it gets my blood boiling. Freaking, it's the, it's the dumbest thing ever. So, yeah. Window, weird window repair guy and whoever the hell is making my ice cream at Culver's. Sleep with one eye open. You hear me? Sleep with one eye open. Okay. Sleep. You know what? Go, go, go ahead and close both eyes. Go ahead. Go. Close, close both eyes. All right. Close both eyes so you don't see me coming in your room. And I'm going to put two pieces of cookie dough in your ice cream. And you're going to wake up and you're going to know what that feels like. You hear me? You hear me? You better hope I don't find you. The ones you love. The ones that love you. The ones that hate you. I hate you. You don't love me. And I don't love you. I just want you to know that you might be sitting there comfortable thinking that you're safe. That you have privacy. That what you do throughout the day doesn't affect others. But let me just tell you this, ice cream person at Culver's. Let me just tell you this. I want you to think about what you believe pain is. Okay? I think, think about it. What is pain to you? Hmm? Let me give you a little news flash. Everything that pain is to you is everything that I can inf inflict upon you. You hear me? You're not safe. You never were. Now you really aren't. You're not safe. Okay? Just remember that. So when you get a mysterious knock at your door or a rock through the window with a note taped on it, just know that that's me. I'm there. You can't stop me. And I'm coming for what I got. So when I come through your drive through again and I ask for double cookie dough, You'll know that your life depends on it. That it's not a question of do I feel like putting double cookie dough in or not. No, 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 it's not. You know what the question is? Hmm? Do you know? The real question is, do I want to see tomorrow? Think about that. Before you skimp me out. On my double cookie dough. On my Friday ice cream. On my hour drive home. You tell yourself what's important. And just know. That things can change very quickly. For you. And everyone that you love. You know that? And I'm not talking about sleeping with the fishes. No, no. No, 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 no. no. Don't be so naive. I'm talking about turning you into a fish. Making you suffocate. And the bright, broad, open daylight of the setting sun. And as you're running down that hill, that hill of regret, a hill of regret, and devious thoughts, just know, just know that I'm the one chasing you, looking for you, hunting for you, 
You can't hide. No. <laughs> no. I'll be there. So the next time I come through and order a large vanilla concrete mixer with salt and caramel and two, two orders of cookie dough. Just be careful. Your life could depend on it. Because it does. I won't stop. Speaking of ice cream, I lost 12 pounds. Uh, so last week, or was it last week or was it the week before? I lost 10 pounds or 12 pounds in one week. Uh, that's a lot. And you might be asking yourself, how? You literally just said that you have a schedule for eating ice cream with cookie dough in it. Yeah, I do. But it's this medication that's really helping me out. It's not like I'm not on like Ozempic or anything. It's an appetite suppressant. And let and let let me and let me tell tell you this. Do you know how how it feels? Okay, let me just let let me just paint you a picture here. Do you know how it feels to have an issue? So I'm 21 years old. Do you know how it feels to have an issue? To have something that you deal with every day, to have a problem that you deal with every every, every day. A problem that you've dealt with every day for 21 years. Do you know what it feels like to take a problem that you've dealt with for 21 years of your life and then one day you find out that this new pill that you're taking completely solves it? Do you know what that feels like? That's an intense feeling. To find out that something that you've been dealing with your entire life has a medication for it. You know, when I was growing up, I had really bad BED. I had really bad binge eating disorder where I would hide food from my parents and take it up to my room and I would eat, 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 eat. And I would go in the kitchen and eat everything I possibly could find and sugar and bread. And I would put the sugar on the bread and I would put bread on butter and sugar on butter. And I would just eat and eat and eat. And I, I would, I, I would take food up from the kitchen. I would hide it under my pillow at night when I was really young. So when mom and dad went to bed, I could just start eating it all. Like it was, I had bad BED. I had bad binge eating disorder. Uh, if you don't, aren't familiar with what binge eating d dis disorder is, it is purely just, you know, uh, it is eating for an insatiable appetite for other, for ulterior reasons. Uh, it was pretty much because of the depression being bullied all the time. Eating was the only thing that made me feel better, but it was also making me unhealthier. Things like that. And it, 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 it creeps up now again these days. But that's like the main reason why I am the like why I'm as as big as I am is because I still kind of deal with those kind of things. But I haven't really exercised that much recently. But the but the medication is helping me eat a whole lot less. And I lost like 12 pounds in one week. So I call that a victory because now like eat like check this out right so I, I i i got this like box of like like general sow's chicken you know just something pretty generic throw it in the air fryer microwave the sauce put the sauce over the chicken uh mix it with the chicken and then you put the chicken on top of like rice right like it's a really good meal um and it it's like a family portion so it it makes it's about two 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 cups of rice and uh like a lot of pieces of, 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 of these like ch almost chicken nuggets, but b higher quality than chicken nuggets in, in the, in the past. And when I say in the past, I'm saying as of last month and everything prior to that, I would easily and always eat all of that in one sitting. I would, I would eat all of that in a single sitting. All of it. I'd never saved anything for later. It was always all gone. I had to eat, 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 and feel full and eat and eat and eat up until like a month ago. And now, because of this medication, I made that chicken and rice, guys. Not just did I not finish it. I ate maybe half of it, felt full, put the rest in the fridge. I took that, the, the, the remaining amount to work to eat for lunch, 
and I didn't even finish it there, and I saved it for the next day, and I finished it then. A meal that I would have finished in one sitting prior to this medication, I let span over three days. I'm very, very proud of myself for that. I'm very happy. I have an appointment to get it re-prescribed to me again on Tuesday. I want to let the, the doctor know of the victories. I'm very excited. And that's why I can kind of eat ice cream like that here and then is because I'm already not taking in a whole lot of calories. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm not saying, oh, since I'm taking this medicine, I can literally eat anything I want. No, I actually want to make a change for myself and my body and my weight. But it's a pretty awesome, pretty awesome thing. I was like at my heaviest was about when I started my job at the hospital, which was like nine months ago, I was like 298 pounds, like literally, literally almost two, uh, 300 pounds. That's scary. And then before I started the medication, I was like, I was, I was like 289, which was like a month a, a, ago. But since then, now I'm, now, now I'm like 278. I shaved my beard, as you can tell. Not shaved, but like I shaved it down to stubble. Uh, clothes are fitting me a little bit better. I know like my Apple Watch feels looser on my wrist. I'm wearing a size 40 for my shorts right now. I used to be a, four, a, four, uh, a 42. Um, I even, I think I had maybe one pair of 44s. I'm a 40 now. Um, I kind of like my face now. I still hate my body and think it's the sole reason why I'm lonely and under and undesirable by women. And no matter how good of an attitude or personality I have, my ugly monster globular body is going to, is going to be what keeps me away from finding love and solace with a human touch. But I'm liking my face now. So I'm really excited about that. Um, why did I shave my beard down? Uh, cause my mom said I look like a terrorist. That kind of thing, uh, that thing, that kind of thing, kind of kills a man's spirit, you know. You know, when your mom says you look like a terrorist. So, so thanks, mom. Real, uh, real, uh, real encourager there. Um, I know. You know the people around me. You know, I, I, I feel like they, they think you know, like, why, why. Like now that I shaved my beard, they think, why didn't he shave it sooner? Like he looks so much better this way. Um, guys, I know I hated how I looked with the beard. I did not like it. I, I, I wasn't doing it because I liked it. I know it looked bad. I know it looked gross. I know it looks so much better now. I know, I know, I know, I know. But let me tell you why I was, I was I, I was leaving it because I was waiting and praying that it grew out to be fuller. It was just in a really awkward terrorist Middle East phase where it was, it just looked kind of crappy. But I thought maybe if I just keep holding out, it'll finally, fi it'll finally happen and it'll, it, it, and it'll grow full and nice. And that's what I want. But then it came to a point I scheduled with, with my, with my barber and I was like, dude, I'm done waiting. We, I mean, I can try and maybe in, in, in another two years, but I'm, I'm, I'm done waiting. Let's just go ahead and chop it off. And I definitely, I, de I def, I definitely like it. I love it. I think I look great. I think I've always, th I've always thought I had a very handsome and, and attractive, you know, neck and up. It's just too bad that a face like this is is stuck on a body like this too. So it kind of ruins everything, but I've, I've, I've always liked my face. So, um, hopefully I'll like everything else, uh, as time goes on with this new medication. Um, yeah, man, crazy, crazy week guys. Um, my ticks are going crazy. I'm tired. I have dry mouth for no reason. Uh, and I'm a little paranoid about this first half of the episode being the typical, De like de de depressing topics but you know what i'm not paranoid because you know what that's what the something cafe is baby girl and baby boy that's what the something cafe podcast is it is honesty it is real it is celestino Dooley. it's a little sexy and it's honest all right it's honest um 
I think that's where we're going to end it, guys. Look, thank you so much for coming by the Something Cafe. Let, let me just say this. I said this, me and Brit- Brittany recorded the new episode for Cafe Critique last night. Some people ask, okay, so like some, like I'll ask someone if they if they listen to the podcast and they'll say, yeah, I watched one episode, but the, ep- the episode is so long that I that I had to turn it off to go do something else. Guys, I don't want you to go watch the video. That's not what I want. I want you guys to enjoy this podcast however you feel like. You don't have to watch the video. You know, like people will send me photos of them wa- of, of them watching it and it's like it's like awesome, but I want you guys to know that there is ways to consume these episodes without having to dedicate time to it by by watching it because lord knows i don't know who wants to watch this i know people want to listen to it there there isn't a lot a whole lot go, going on with the video aspect but um you can en- enjoy this whenever you want it could be at work it could be driving to work it could be driving home from work it could be while you're doing the dishes i want you guys to sit down at the something cafe anywhere you are and just spend this hour and a half to two hours with me thinking about some of the stupid things that I talk about, the fun things that I talk about, and uh, things are going well. Episode 14, we're on uh, episode, we just recorded episode 4 of Cafe Critique last night. We went and saw the movie Monkey Man, which I really enjoyed. Um, And guys, that's it. So thank you for coming by the Something Cafe and grabbing a cup with me. Uh, you can listen to the Something Cafe on two new audio platforms. That's right. I've added both shows to two more audio platforms. You can listen to the Something Cafe and Cafe Critique on Spotify, on Apple Music, on YouTube, on Amazon Music, and on iHeartRadio Music. All right? Check me out there. This is my baby, my project. This is my brand. This is my show. This is my muse and you are my audience and i thank you for coming along and watching thank you for stopping by the something cafe i'll see you guys next week peace out